Welcome to the Lakeville Historical Commission monthly meeting. Uh, in accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law C 30A and 20 related to the 2020 novel coronavirus outbreak emergency, the Wednesday, May 19th, 2021 public meeting of the Lakeville Historical Commission shall be closed to the public to avoid congregation. However, to view this meeting in progress, please go to Facebook, Calm Lake Cam, and you do not need a Facebook account to view the meeting. The meeting will be recorded and available for viewing at a later date at http slash www.lakecam.com. Uh, TV slash. Okay. Calling the meeting to order. Uh, the meeting is being recorded. You have to look over there. <laughs> okay. Minutes. We have two. We have March 17th, 2021 and April 21st, 2021. Okay. Uh, Everybody read the minutes, so we don't have to repeat them. Yes. Okay. Okay, the March 17th. Anybody have any admissions or corrections? There was one, and I don't know whether it was the March one or the April one, but the Memorial Day date uh, was, was incorrect. Incorrect one place. I think it was I think it would be the April one, Jerry. The yeah. next. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. Motion to approve the March 17th meetings. Notes. So moved. Uh, roll call. A second. Second was okay. um, Joan Morton. Glad to. you right. Roll call vote. Brian Reynolds? Aye. Joan Morton? Aye. Jerry Taylor? Aye. Nancy Lefebvre? Aye. Um, Delia Murphy is absent. This She's out of state. Okay. Minutes approved. Now we move to the April 21st meetings. Minutes. I think those are the ones Jerry was talking about. Mm -hmm. Any other errors or admissions? May 30th should be May It said 30th. May 31st. On pa last page, number nine, new business. Line two should be May 31st instead of May 30th. Probably should say Dicker and Dyron Square, too, instead of Town Square. Town Square, yeah. Yes. Okay. Any other admissions or corrections? Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Roll uh, call vote. Roll Ryan call. Reynolds. Aye. Joan Morton. Aye. Jerry Taylor. Aye. Nancy Lefebvre. Aye. And uh, okay. Motion minutes approved. Uh, Treasurer's report. Um, the townhouse account has five hundred sixty-two dollars and seventy-five cents. Um, I did talk to Nate about the encumbered money for the chimney, two thousand three hundred fifty dollars, and he spoke to the mason, and he's going to do it the first or second um, week of June. And um, the Historical Commission uh, has $500 and the scholarship, uh, educational scholarship has uh, $3,000, um, what do you call that? Non-expendable. Uh, Non-expendable. Non -expendable and $702.71. Uh, and uh, expendable. expendable and I will be getting in touch with um, the treasurer to get the update on the interest.
before June 30th. Okay. Any other comments on the treasurer's report? We need to spend the, our money before June 30th. Yes. And so I have some ideas under new business. business. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Motion to approve the treasurer's report. Somebody. <laughs> You're gonna... okay. So moved. I'll do it again. So moved. Second. Okay. So Second. now we need to do a roll call vote. Brian Reynolds. Right. Joan Morton. Aye. Uh, Aye. <laughs> Nancy uh, LaFay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Double eyes here. Correspondence. Okay, correspondence. Anybody got any correspondence? I have not been to the mailbox, but I haven't heard anything from the town office building. However, we did have emails regarding the Lakeville Hospital, um, the Children's Ward building. Uh, we had um, also uh, a, a donation that was made and that was done um, over the computer too. And I'll talk to you about it at that during gifts. But that is basically it, I think, at this point. Okay. Uh, okay. Old business, historic townhouse update. Well, I mentioned the um, uh, chimney repair and um, uh, Nate Darling said that uh, it would be the month of June that that would right. be done. Plus, we have some issues still to be done. Uh, we have the door, some issues with the door, and we also approved the um, inclusion of cameras for in case a program is held or a meeting is held in the building. Now that we have on-demand HVAC heat and air conditioning. Um, so those are still still some ongoing things. We have we still have a couple of questions about the right door. It worked fine for the Garden Club plant sale, but it still needs to be made sure that it's secure and it needs a different handle. And we still need new new locks for uh, both our office upstairs and for the main door because that's tricky, a little tricky one. And we need to make sure that Delia has a key and Jerry has a key that works. So. If we could get that done, everybody could get new keys and we could start from fresh again. Um, Nate also told me that he was trying to get a replacement for that upstairs window. Um, the difficult thing is um, it, it has lead paint, so it has to be removed. But to get a replica of that exact um, window is difficult. He's, he's looking for you know some old an uh, antique window, window. An an antique 1856 window that doesn't have lead, lead paint, paint. <laughs> so or it's been on decontaminated one of the two yes okay but I, I was up there yesterday and it it's 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 stable the way it is right now is stable so we don't have to worry about it falling in or falling out or anything like that um, I have a bill for the plants for the four barrels. It's four barrels and three window boxes and then the long window box that's underneath the community sign. So the total for everything is the um, four whiskey barrels in front of the um, townhouse. That was $71.98 for those. Those are hangers. And then for the rest of the annuals, we have a donation from the garden clubs of some material. And I have made a donation, but the balance of the rest of the geraniums for the sun and the shade for the other side of the honor roll came to $32.94. So the total is $104.92 that I would like to be reimbursed for. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, say it again. So that comes out of the history. It's um, $71.98 for the hangers. 
They were yep. seventeen ninety nine a piece, and thirty two ninety four for the um, balance of the the geraniums and things for the four other planters. So yep. the total was one hundred four dollars and ninety two cents. Okay, I just want to make certain it's clear. How do we do this? Okay. We need it three comes out of the historic townhouse account. Yes, but how do we do this? We need three signatures. Well, yeah, so we'll have to. We'll have um, to meet. Yeah, I have all the bills together for you because we have the one for the bunting too. And we'll just have people come by at a certain time and sign. Well, we're going to be at the townhouse on Tuesday morning. If everybody else can stop by, we can get everything signed. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So we need a motion to approve the bill or bills. Yeah. I make a motion somebody to reimburse make, Nancy for the flowers for the old townhouse. In the okay. of, somebody second? I second that for $104.92. Okay. okay. Uh, roll call. Brian Reynolds. Aye. Joan Morton. Aye. Jerry Taylor. Aye. I will abstain because I'm being reimbursed. Right. The motion passes. Uh, moving on, uh, historic La Lakeville Public Library update. Okay, what they've done is they've um, removed the foundation plantings around the building and fencing. Mm -hmm. And this week, yes, yesterday, uh, they put gravel in the area where the uh, for Scythia were, which is at the end of the building, and then around on either side of the stairs. They've also um, painted all the exterior windows and any place where a window was taken out because of heating vents and stuff like that and some some piece of wood was planted that's been painted the um the front of the building has been painted i'm not sure i haven't been there to see if the um the stairs were repaired because we were concerned about the area on either side of the steps that was starting to separate so um all the painting exterior painting has been done and the garden club has done um, the cleanup and planting annuals to, co to complement and supplement the perennials that are in the point garden. So that's done. And the sign, the black metal sign post and hanger that goes across have been um, repainted, I believe, with some kind of rust -oleum type product. But I haven't been inside, okay. so I don't know how the bathroom if the bathroom's done not or not. Okay. Uh, anything else under library update? Okay. Moving on to 175th anniversary, 2028. One of the things Anybody want to make comments? One Go of ahead. the things we talked about, Brian, was that maybe we would be able to do a face-to-face -face soon. So I'm wondering if, depending on how things continue, um, in the state with the COVID um, restrictions or mandates, if we would maybe be able to meet sometime in late June or maybe early July, not July 4th, but I mean, sometime in July, Ju June or July. Yeah, that would be a very good idea, I think. I mean, time it passes pretty quickly and, you know, it'll be a town report due fairly, you know, we should report on things. We have um, seven uh, years before, so. We, <laughs> well, but I mean, we, we got appointed them. six months ago and uh, people will kind of want to know what's going on, I think. Okay. Yep. Uh, update on long range plans, etc. We're uh, still working on that. But that we have new long range plans because at the um, town meeting, they approved the money for the archaeological survey map. Good. Good thing. Huh? That's a good thing. So that is something that we can uh, find. We, I have to seek further information about how you contact someone who can create that for us. So, so that we okay. have a new thing. We have a new thing to do. All right. Now the CPA appointment. Uh, I think it all hinges possibly 
it'll be brought up at the fall town meeting for the uh, vote on the Community Preservation Act. And if that passes, somebody from the Historical Commission needs to be a member of that, the, the new CPA commission or committee or whatever it's going to be called. And we had talked about maybe Dahlia would might like to be on that. Any other comments? Um, in talking with Nate, he, um, he said that um, it would be a good thing because we could get money, but then there are also some restrictions. So he he need, he's going to be looking into it. I think he's he talks to uh, someone on the planning board, um, and they're discussing what to do next on that. Okay, and we still need to update the master plan and the open space plan. Uh, I have so redone the, uh, I've already redone the first historical section of the open space plan. It's ready to go. And I have yeah. most of the geological section done. How we got that, I'm not really sure, but that's just about done too. And then yes, I will do the historical good. section that's further into the open space plan next. So that has to be changed quite a bit. Okay. This is the last one. So that's well on its way. Good. So we're two Thank thirds, you. almost two thirds done. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, about, no problem. Okay, okay, moving on, demolitions and gifts. We have a gift. Um, I hope I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna say her, she has three names. I'm only gonna say the first and the last because I'm sure I'm not gonna do a good job on this. Dina Bowsmer, who lives on Taunton Street, was a neighbor of Winthrop Holloway and ended up that she received um, some things from him and included in it were lots of photographs, um, journals, uh, photo albums, and some antique colos, which she's given to us. And I thought it would be a great project for us to do this summer at the townhouse when we can all meet and put it all together. So it's right now it's in two boxes. It's in our office. Um, it's all secure, it's all taped together. Um, she, one of the questions she asked me and I, I just wanna bring it out today, today was how she wanted to know what we would do with it. And I told her that we had talked about having a, hist a tour of Taunton Street as one of the possible places, including Highland Road and someplace else, some other streets that had a lot to do with the history sometime in 28. So some of this material could be used in a book, but we wouldn't take things apart that we would either take photographs of the photographs so the albums and everything would stay intact. So if someone came to do research on the Holloway family or this part, particular branch of the family, they would find everything there together. But there are lots and lots of, of there's one whole box just full of photographs. Maybe That's two wonderful. Journals. So I was thinking with the money that we have not spent and we and we haven't, did we do our gravestones, dues, gravestone studies dues, Jerry, or is that in Ju July that we do I that? I think that's in July. That's right after the fiscal year. But so. we haven't done it this for 2020 because we still have 500, right? Yes. So we have to, if we can deduct that from there, well, my, my thought was, and, and I'd like input from the other members is that we, once we sorted everything out, that we would put, compile all of the photographs into certain albums where they'd be sleeves, no sticky things that would uh, destroy the paper or anything that were kind of archival. And that way, if somebody was looking for photographs of the particular family member, and we would try and designate and then we'd have a lot probably that we may not know who they are one of the interesting things when we were going through one of the photo albums um last week was that the original holiday house which was a center chimney uh georgian with five bays meaning five windows across the top and then four windows and a door in the middle was was lost in a fire 
but we have photographs that were taken early of family members standing sort of with the house in the background. So we have now have at least a pictorial rendering of that house, which we might not have had otherwise. So that is real find right there. So my idea was be to secure material in advance for the sizes of the pictures that we have. And so that we'd be able to chronologically put everything together. I believe that most of the um, journals that are kept are like yearbook, the books with, for the year with all the pages listed and things have been pasted or glued inside it. Um, a lot of things about religion, but also about travel and things like that and events that were happening. So there's newspaper clippings and cards from people and stuff. And that would be a really interesting element because the person who put those together was a woman. And so we've started to have a women's history area at the Lakeville Public Library, but it's really not open for access at this point. But those are the types of things that people might want to research and look back to see what it was like to be a woman at this time period in history. So these are all just sort of things that we need to talk to, like the dire uh, director of the library and, and see what she suggests because she knows about archival stuff and everything and, and go forward with that. But I would like to have make a motion that we spend most uh, whatever balance minus the gravestone studies um, dues, mm -hmm. if they're actually gonna be this fiscal year to June. Yeah. We have to look that one up, I think. I and. Um, do the most of the balance of that towards um, the archiving of this this great treasure, really, when you think about it. So, okay, I think that's a great so, idea. Any other com any other uh, comments? Okay, a call for so, a vote. Somebody, um, somebody, make a motion. So I'm going to move that we um, earmark money to purchase um, binders or photo album type things so that we can get all these loose pictures into them. And I'm talking a lot, like a box this big by this big at least full of, yes. of loose pictures. So, I mean, even if we did it by time period as opposed to like the earliest ones we have that are loose and so forth. Most of those I think though are in the black albums, you know, attached to the black paper and everything. Um, so I would say that we earmarked the, the purchase of money to archive this um, collection that we've received. On, okay, um, somebody second this? Mr. I second. Okay, we have a second. Uh, roll call vote. Brian Reynolds? Aye. John Morton? Aye. Gary Taylor? Aye. Nancy Lefebvre? Aye. And we should know what that is, Jerry, before the end of the month, next month. Right. Okay. Okay. I'll do so that. maybe Monday, when you and I, when you're there with me planting, we could go upstairs and just kind of get a rough estimate about how many, how much stuff we would need to put this um, into something other than a box. Right. Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got Monday on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on. Uh, Memorial Day. He had sent everybody out all the information. Um, it should be an article in this week's Middleburg Gazette. Tracy's got information for the selectmen and um, uh, the posters are out. I gave you a copy, each of you, a, a copy of the uh, agenda for that day. We're all going to be at um, 1030 at Dickron Duran, which is the World War One Memorial Park. And or square. And if it rains, we're still doing it because we don't have a rain date for Memorial Day. And can we Which remind people me? not well, remind we, people not to go to the fire station? Yes. Because but what we're going to do is um, the poster will be there too, but I'm going to um, put one on the historic townhouse in a sleeve in case it rains. And I think we may have the community sign which will tell everybody where to go. And the, I've been specific about the drive, the road names of where this park square is located. And at the time that I put it in, put it, did everything, we were still under requirements to wear masks and socially distance. And 
at this point, I don't know what the town is going to do, but I know the state is supposed to be, if you have had your inoculation, then you may go and be able to um, converse with people without mask and I, I guess without social distancing. But if you haven't had your inoculation, then that presents a problem. Personally, I'm going to be wearing my mask only because of some of the people that live in my house and concerns about health. Um, this is the first winter in three years that would, nobody in my house had a head cold or a sore throat. We also didn't get COVID-19, but I really feel that, you know, the masks made a difference because normally with preschoolers and for a first grader, you have every little cold that's come through the classroom. So the distancing and the part-time classes and all that, I'm sure we're all contributing to it. So um, when we actually have the thing um, on Monday the 31st, it will all be just like it was at Veterans Day, well, I'll be just at Dicker and Duran Square and there will be no exhibit at the townhouse and there will be no um, refreshments. I will bring bottled water in case it's hot and people need water, but. So. Okay, that's good. So the now moving on. The, wreaths will be, the other wreaths will be placed earlier in the day or a couple of days before. I'll so go the, around and change out all the flags. And I saw our veterans agent was doing um, Pond Cemetery yesterday. We did Thompson Hill and Precinct yesterday too. Yeah. So um, we need at the honor roll, we have one, the flag on the left has the staple has come loose at the top. I've already added um, larger flags to the barrels and to the- I saw them, sign. they look pretty nice. And I'll go around and do all the memorials probably this weekend. I have the flags ready in my trunk. And the um, red, white, and blue stone at the historic library? Yes. I think you and did that one last year. I think it has the markers I did. on it. Right, I did. So I'll get that one. I'll get Hitchcock. I'll get Dick Rinderan, the town office building, the honor roll. I think that's all of them. And the red, white, and blue stone. Right. So I'm waiting to hear back to see if we have any speakers. Um, Will Corey, who is a veterans agent, usually is it comes and speaks um, whether we will have anyone else. It's the first weekend of summer. So sometimes people already have plans that they've had for years and years. So we'll see whether or not anybody's around to help. But otherwise we need a person to do the Pledge of Allegiance and Jerry does such a fine job doing that. I'd love to. <laughs> so I would assume oh, that unless we had someone else, and I have not heard anything from any scouts. I do know there is a Boy Scout troop that is still active. Um, but by that time, I'm, I'm not even sure that the Brownies, I think they had a sign up, but I'm not sure if they um, actually had meetings or not. I know. Um, so we might just have a few people like we did at Veterans Day. Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll try anyway. Okay, update on Lakeville Hospital demolition and recovery of items. Do you want to talk about that, Brian? Because you and I and Joan went and met with them. Well, yes, we, we did a walkthrough of some of the grounds at Lakeville Hospital and talked to some of the people that uh, are going to do the demolition and that are in charge. And... Uh, it, we mentioned to them about the figures on the wall of the children's ward. They represent scenes from a, a children's nursery rhyme. And they said they would try to save the things and hopefully they go to the Lakeville Library, uh, but they could not guarantee in the process of demolition that they wouldn't be damaged. But they said they would try. Uh, and so that's where we left it. We're hoping for the best. Anybody what else have comments? Joan? I think they, they felt more secure that they could get the other Mayflower, but they weren't so sure about the nursery rhyme characters on the front. And I think it's because of the depth of the, the, the dimensions, the thickness of the actual pieces and the fact that yeah. it's not on a wooden, wooden wall, it's on a masonry wall. 
And if you, if I don't know if anybody's ever looked in, at the one, the Mayflower we have at the library, which is near the water bubbler. But if you look at the back, there's rocks and cement. And so this thing has been applied to this masonry wall. So the, the, it, it may be that they will be able to get the other half moon shape of or half circle shape of the ship uh, up. But the other pieces are much, this, the thing is like about, I don't know, three, maybe three or four inches deep. The other pieces you can see, they're not that thick. And so that's why there's a concern. So we have a lot of photographic evidence that we took pictures and everything and, and they were very cooperative. So we'll see. And they're also going to be looking for us to see if they can find, it seems to me that at one point in time when I was there, just before you went into the, um, the theater area, that was the assembly area outside the lobby, that there were plaques on the walls that were things that were either people had donated something and their name was on a plaque or um, they were part of a volunteer group that met and that was their an organization. And so all of those shield type plaques or rectangular plaques, I believe were, were, were outside there or they were somewhere in the lobby area. And so if they find anything like wood <laughs> that we could clean, and not to have to worry about asbestos and mold and mildew that they're gonna try and see if they can find when they get to demolish, demolishing that part of the building that they're gonna go in and, and see if there's anything there for us. So we just hope either that or it could be in, in an office someplace. Somebody could have taken them down and may have a box with our name on it or the historical society. Well, the, the only thing I can mention is the uh, Twix, Twixbury, I don't know if I pronounce it right, former state hospital. Some of that, I think, was converted into a museum of the artifacts from all the different state hospitals and institutions. So some of that stuff may be up at Twixbury. So that would be one place to look if we don't find anything in any of the buildings. That was, sounds like a trip. Yes, we or we could email them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they may have something online. I have no idea. Okay, we'll check that out. Yeah, but it would make a nice trip too, yes. <laughs> okay. Any other business here? New business? Um, Boston Post case. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we talked just briefly about was that when um, the last person received the Boston Post cane, it, it, the cane actually belongs to the Historical Society and is housed at the museum. And some historical societies or commissions that actually own their, their town's cane have had duplicates made so that the original one stays in a safe, secure place. And then they can hand out and the person gets to keep until they're no longer with us the cane and then the family returns it to the town offices or to the commission or somebody. So we're going to, we're going to get in touch with um, one of the, there was a couple of towns that were mentioned and the idea is to contact them. And I haven't done that yet, but I will do it for before the next meeting. Okay. That's good. Uh, it would certainly be nice to have a copy of it. All right. Any other new business? What about no? the capital project, the um, archaeological survey. May I see the town, the town at the town meeting. Yes, they did. The um, town approved. It was on capital ex expenditures. The capital projects. We were number yeah fourteen. It was $30,000. The, the problem that I see with it is I think we were supposed to have done the update of the inventory over last year, but with the virus, we were a little backed up. Right. And, and so we, we still so have, we still have three. I things don't know how to know. work this out. We have three things that we have to do and all three of them are things that we can't do. Well, we could do the national 
register resi designation for Thompson Hill, but we can't submit that until our inventory is co considered comprehensive by Mass Historical Commission. And that's what we're trying to do first so that we can do the next one. But the third one, the archeological survey map, I don't believe is you have to, that's just something you can do as a town. That, that, that's not tied into our, um, into our survey at all. Well, don't you know, you think the problem, of course, is funding. Well, if but we have CPA, the money. Okay, we have if the we money, have right, the money. We have the money. They appropriated it before. So we've got the th all three things on our wish list from 10 years ago. We 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 have. So we just have to get the, the personnel to be able to do that. And it's not really us on the um, archaeological survey map or the um, comprehensive survey. Those two things have to be done by somebody who is a researcher. Okay. Like so, Mr. Krim. Right. Mr. Krim was the one I that know. did the last one first. Yes. But I think we need to either contact a Mass Historical Commission or someplace like the uh, University at Mass at Amherst, who has an archaeological department, and find sources of people that can do it. Well, this is what we've been trying, what I've been trying to do, and I'm not getting any information so i know i, don't know I, know, if I have but to schedule an appointment now you know i realized that due to covid19 there are a lot of things that weren't the people couldn't do because of you couldn't you know people were furloughed and stuff like that so i don't know exactly what happened at the state level but um one of the things is that this is one of the things that we need to do plus we now have a contact with the um historical society that you went and visited their museum so they may have some people that they know about. So, I mean, I think we can network and try and get this thing going so that by the fall, we have somebody in place to do the work for us. Because we that have the be money. Fine. You know, we, we really need to move along with these projects because uh, it would, where we have the master plan and the open space plan and we, these are all parts of what have been put into them, I think. And so we need to follow up on them all. Anybody else got any other comments? Well, we'll no? Have, we'll have to get going on this. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, okay, next meeting is going to be when? June 16th. Okay. Uh, Maybe we'll be meeting okay, in person. So, Wouldn't that be fun? In person. Okay. Not that we don't want to be with Sean again because he could probably still be taping wow. us, but at least we might be able to meet. <laughs> yes. Maybe by July. Well, we'll hopefully we can do it in June. But if not, we'll try for July. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Any, second. Okay, a second. Very good. Uh, roll call. Brian Reynolds. Aye. John Morton. Aye. Jerry Taylor. Aye. Nancy Lefebvre. Aye. Eight ten. Okay. Motion carries. We are adjourned.